Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Uh, welcome learners, my name is Stephen Kariungi and today we continue with our chemistry lesson and the topic is on the structure of the atom and the periodic table. Uh, during our last uh, lesson, uh, we distinguished between a group and a period. And we said that uh, members of the same group are those that have the same number of electrons in the outermost energy level. On the other hand, uh, we said that members of the same period have the same number of occupied energy levels. So today we would want us to uh, see how a periodic table is developed, uh, putting into consideration the groups and periods. So we're going to discuss development of a periodic table. And as we develop our periodic table, uh, we are going to concentrate on the first 20 elements. And these are some, these are the elements that uh, we encountered or we have encountered previously. And these are from hydrogen all the way to calcium. So we are going to have a sample of how the periodic table is developed. So on this sample of periodic table, uh, we'll start with uh, hydrogen, which is put at a higher position somewhere here. Then we have helium. Then from there we come to lithium, beryllium, boron. Then there is carbon nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine and neon is the tenth, then again sodium, magnesium, aluminium, silicon, Phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, argon, then potassium and calcium. So this is a sample of a periodic table showing the first 20 elements. With the 20 elements. Uh, so this uh, 
elements are arranged according to the number of electrons that is one atomic number mass number is one So this shows the sample of the periodic table. So the number that is written above is the mass number. The number at the bottom is the atomic number, which we have already gone through. And say that the number above is the superscript and the number below is the subscript. So the superscript represents the mass number. The subscript represents the atomic number. Then on top here, uh, we write the, the periods. This is uh, the periods and groups. This is group one, group two, group three, four, five, six, seven, and finally eight. And those groups are written in Roman numbers. Then, so the groups are the columns. The first column is group one, group two, three, four, up to group eight. So these are a total of eight groups. Then in between group two and group three, uh, we have what we call transition metals and those transition metals are not put in any particular group so those metals are not put in any particular group as you continue then we have the periods this is period one that row period 2 3 and 4 so the periods are the horizontal rows but the groups are the vertical columns so we are saying that uh, when developing the periodic table <coughs> Uh, horizontal rows are the periods while vertical columns are the groups and we say that groups are always written in Roman numbers as indicated in this uh, periodic table. So we have group 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So these are a total of 8 groups in the periodic table and there is a total of 9 periods. So the, the periods continue continue downwards each row is a period each row is a period up to the ninth one so we can say that uh, there are eight groups in the periodic table or in the entire periodic table and nine and nine periods. So basically that's about the how the periodic table is uh, is developed and uh, for this periodic table we have only considered the first 20 elements from hydrogen up to up to calcium. 
So we'll have an assignment on this. <coughs> So the assignment, an atom is written as x, 32, 16. So 32 is the superscript, 16 is the subscript. Determine the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons that are present. Part B, determine its group and also its period. And then C, draw the structure of its atom showing the electron arrangement. So we are going to stop there until next time. Goodbye.